explosion. I'm Brian Coberline, and this is Big Science Observations. So as we've been developing our new documentary series, we've looked at a lot of big research facilities, and one facility really stood out, and that's Green Bank Observatory in rural West Virginia. Green Bank is a small community that seems almost frozen in time, and yet it's home to one of the most sophisticated radio telescope facilities on the planet. Green Bank is a contradiction. Green Bank is full of contradictions. For one, it's located in a remote Appalachian mountain valley. If you climb up into the hills outside of Green Bank, you can see for miles. In the early morning, mist rises from the small creek beds in the area, and in the warmth of the morning sun, it clears to reveal small farms and fields. But in the middle of all of this is the Green Bank Robert C. Byrd Telescope. It's a huge white telescope that rises out of the area like a cathedral, but it's taller. It is taller than the Statue of Liberty. Its dish is 100 meters wide, which means you could put a football field and a stadium and concession stands and still have room for more. A radio telescope is designed to listen to faint signals from outer space. And this telescope is so sensitive it could hear the energy of a snowflake falling. And if you had a cell phone on the surface of Mars, this telescope could easily pick up the signal. Another contradiction of Green Bank is in the people that you meet. They don't fit the stereotypical mountain folk you see in television and movies. For example, the machinists and equipment operators at Green Bank are very highly skilled at what they do. Most of the leadership and scientists at Green Bank are native West Virginians and highly educated. Meanwhile, out in the community, we met a country preacher with a physics degree who sees no conflict between science and faith. As you drive into Green Bank, your car radio will fade to static, you won't get any bars on your cell phone, and that's because Green Bank is in the middle of the National Radio Quiet Zone. Even Wi-Fi is hard to come by. It's available at a few places like the local ski resort, but it's highly restricted. When we visited Green Bank, we stayed at a place that had only one Ethernet cable, and we all had to share. So why is this so restricted? Well, all of the modern conveniences that we have interfere with the radio signals these telescopes are trying to detect. So you might think that these restrictions make Green Bank rather isolated, but that's not true. Folks find lots of ways to stay connected. They work their family farms or participate in their church groups or community groups, they even volunteer at the local fire department. Green Bank itself has become a community hub. There are trails that wind through the telescopes and you can see people out jogging or walking their dogs. And almost every weekend, there's a scientist giving a community lecture at Green Bank. Green Bank shows that you don't have to be constantly connected to the internet in order to have a connected lifestyle. In fact, it might even be holding you back. So how did this radio telescope facility find itself in Green Bank? And how has the facility affected the traditional Appalachian culture in the area? And after 60 years, can Green Bank survive against an increasingly technological modern world? These are some of the questions we want to explore on our Big Science television series. I'm Brian Coberline. Thanks for watching Big Science Observations.